بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In this video, I'm going to present ROS services. So ROS services are different from ROS topics. In the previous videos, we have seen how to create topics and how to work with topics. And topics are actually effective way of communication between two different ROS nodes. And it involves one node that works as a publisher and another node that works as a subscriber. And the publisher keeps sending every new information and every new data to the subscriber. This is how it works for the ROS topics. For the ROS services, it is another communication paradigm that involves a server and the client. So let's see how it works. So as we mentioned, with ROS service, we have two entities. The ROS server, it's the node that is going to provide the service. And a ROS client, it's the node who is going to consume the service and it's different from the topic in the sense that the service is one-time communication it means a client sends a request and then the server will send a response and then the communication will be closed if the client would like to have an additional information from the server it needs to send another request so only one communication happens for every connection between the client and the server and this is not like with topics because with topics the publisher keeps sending information to the subscriber whenever there is any new update the publisher keeps sending to the subscriber which is going to continuously consume the data received from the publisher however with ROS services the client will send the request and then the server will just send back a response and then the communication will be closed there are different scenarios where ROS services are more effective than ROS topics and basically we need ROS services when we want to request a specific action to be performed by the robot. Imagine for example you would like to do a path planning from a point A to a point B. So in this case you will send a request to the planner and the planner should be implemented as a service. So the planner is going to receive a point A and a point B and would have information about the map and then is going to make appropriate computations in order to find the path and finally sends back the path to the client. So this is an example where we need a ROS service and we don't need a ROS topic because we only need to have one path per request. Also spawning a robot in the simulator like it is the case with Turtle Sim and we can see an example right now. So to quickly understand the concept, let's do this very simple example. I'm going to start row score and then I'm going to start turtle seam node. So now as you can see we have only one turtle in the simulator. We can display the list of all services available for this node. So we can see now using the command or a service list, we are able to find all the services related to the node TurtleC. One of the services is called Spawn. Spawn, it means duplicate. And this allows to create an additional turtle into the simulator. But before doing that, so we want to understand what is the structure of the service Spawn. What does it expect as arguments? Because when the client sends a request to the server, it's going to send a request with some arguments and then the server is going to send back a response. So here the request we're going to send to the server is to duplicate the turtle in the simulator. So we can use the command ROS service info and then the name of the service spawn. So you can see that here this service is provided by the node turtle sim. So we can find ROS node list. Okay and here we have ROS out. This is the Roscore node and turtle sim this is the node so this turtle sim node it provides a service that is called spawn and this is the uri where the service is located the port number and the type of the server so this is the type of the message turtle sim spawn we can see the message format here and then the arguments so the client when it sends a request it must send the x y coordinates it means where it will be located here in the simulation environment so from here we have 0, 0 point and this point is 5 
by it. And then the orientation theta and the name. We can also check the type of the ROS service. This is the type here, turtle seam slash spawn. So we can use the command ROS SRV for ROS service info turtle seam spawn. And here we can find the structure of the message. And as I already explained, the service consists of a request sent by the client and a response sent by the server. So we can see that the format of the service is composed of two different parts. The upper part here that contains x, y, theta, name are the same as the arguments. And these are the arguments that the client should send in the request. And the second part here, it represents the response of the server. And here we can see that the server is going just to return the name of the robot that is created. So let's try to apply this here to create a new turtle scene in the simulator. We're going to use ROS service call and then we're going to call the name of the service. So the service here is called spawn. And now we will provide the arguments of the request x, y, theta and name. So let me create at point seven seven. So remember this point is 5, 5, so 7, 7 should be somewhere here. And then this is the orientation. I will put 180. Uh, I can put 0. Okay. And finally the name, I'm going to call it T2. So you can see now we have created a new turtle in the simulator at the position 7, 7. We can do for another one. For example, I want to create it at let's say 5 and 9, I'm going to call it T3 and let me make it 90 degrees of orientation and it's going to create something almost here. Okay, so you can see now this is how the service request and response works. So you can see the response now is just the name. Okay, the name, this is the format of the response. So in the next videos, you are going to understand how we can implement a service. Now, in, in this demonstration, I'm showing how to use a service that already exists. But we will also demonstrate how to implement and create a new service and what are the different steps. So at this point in time, you just need to understand that a service has two different parts, a client and a server and they exchange a message. So one message is sent by the client and the response message is sent by the service back to the client.